Hey, Perry. Schultz. I'm uh, one of the science teachers here, and I'm glad you joined me today. I left uh, the mountains of Idaho to go to the Naval Academy some time ago, and I spent a career with the Naval Aviation as a Naval officer. And um, I'll be referring back to some of those stories. Uh, our aircraft was to locate and track uh, enemy submarines. And with that, I developed a keen sense of appreciation for sound in the ocean, the weather we, that we flew in. I've taken a lot of weather briefings. Uh, the stars, uh, one time taught uh, celestial navigation in uh, aircraft, where we'd use nothing but a sextant and a compass to find our way across and around the oceans. Uh, I wanted to uh, ask you a question. Will a, a screen from your door make a good bottle cap? That's the question of the day. And we're going to go ahead and do some observations. Well, first of all, we're going to hear the sound going through, and we're going to go ahead and feel the porous nature of the screen. And we're going to see some water go through there, and we're going to come to a conclusion. By making those observations. The conclusion is going to be called uh, first a, a hypothesis, our best guess. So my hypothesis might be the screen will not make a good bottle cap because I saw the water go in and I saw the porous nature of it. But when I do the experiment, I see that in fact the screen held the water in place. So then I go back and I redo that experiment again and see if it holds its place another time. I might get different results, in which case I redo my hypothesis. That's called the scientific method. Something's been somewhat maligned over the last few weeks, uh, but something that we strongly believe in. Most science courses that your kids take will start with the scientific method. Um, it's the, what gave us the industrial revolution, and it's how we have been able to reach out and bless the world with technology, is by trying, failing, and trying again, like, uh, Oh, I'm, I'm thinking of the light bulb, right? All right, so we're going to go to uh, chemistry. Chemistry is a class that uh, is going to go through chapter 16. You're going to get plenty of chemistry to get them through college in really good shape. We're going to go just touch into thermal chemistry. We're going to make sure we got acid-base titration. But honors chemistry, we're going to go almost essentially through the book. And uh, with cover deeper uh, subjects in redox and uh, nuclear chemistry and possibly organic chemistry. And in earth science, I get to teach eighth grade this is the first time. This can be great. And the reason is because this is uh, really trying to level the playing field here when you consider worldview. Uh, is it going to be uh, biblical creation or is it going to be uh, evolution that you're going to embrace? And I'm going to give the kids both sides of the issue so that they can, in fact, see the difference. Uh, frankly, our school uh, believes in a, a young earth, 24 hour day uh, creation. And so, and I, uh, I feel that way myself, biblically speaking, I can see all kinds of evidence for that uh, approach to the interpretation of science. But it all depends upon your worldview. And those kids will be thinking, and that's something that some, even in our colleges, they're not allowing the kids to do, is to see both sides and think it through for themselves. And I am strongly uh, an advocate for um, biblical creation. And then I teach geometry as well. Now, um, one thing you're going to ask is, <clears throat> well, what are we going to do about us at home? And the fact is, I'm going to have a tablet. I'm going to be streaming into your home. And so when that uh, time comes in my class where I say, let's go to the lab. I'll just go around the corner into the lab, and I'll carry the tablet with me. And then I'll have a student hold it so that you can see my demonstration. And then I will go ahead and put it on display while the students are doing the lab for themselves. And so you'll get plenty of lab. Just show up to my labs if you show up you'll get your uh, 100 for your lab score. Uh, the homework uh, will be graded in class. You'll be with me in class. You'll be able to talk to me. It's going to be really neat. 
I'm not going to lose a thing through this whole process of using distance learning with Canvas. Um, and so the other thing is, what are you going to do about grading homework? It's going to be done the same way. I'm going to take your, uh, it's like we're having a Zoom session together. I'm going to take your uh, grades and put it in a grade book. And then the most of my score will be uh, the test. And uh, I'm going to make uh, the test worth a lot. So for eighth graders, you probably will not be having homework. Uh, just once in a while, but the homework will be to study for the test, which is going to come down every week and a half or so. But you'll have plenty of notes in your notebook, and you'll have plenty of lab information. And uh, if it's a essay type of a question, I'll give you a, a hint as to what it is I'm going to ask beforehand, so you can be thinking about it. But the key thing is that you, uh, if you're at home, that you take good notes and show up. You'll do just fine. Okay. I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys. Can't wait to have you in class again. This is where I get my energy, is teaching you. God bless you. We're in this together, parents. And eighth grade parents, the first day, I'm going to give them their big people talk. We'll talk about responsibilities. They do have a job. Their job is school right now. It's going to reinforce that they are now mapping their own destiny. You're not going to have to do it all for them. Isn't that neat? All right. God bless you. See you.